We shall now be pleased to hear from Ronald E. Pullman of the First Quorum of the Seventy. My remarks this morning are directed primarily to those of you who have accepted the gospel and are members of the church, and to those of you who may be seriously contemplating such acceptance and membership. Both the gospel of Jesus Christ and the church of Jesus Christ are true and divine. However, there is a distinction between them which is significant, and it is very important that this distinction be understood. And there is an essential relationship between them that is significant and very important. Of equal importance is understanding the essential relationship between the gospel and the church. Failure to distinguish between the two and to comprehend their proper relationship may lead to confusion and misplaced priorities with unrealistic and therefore failed expectations. This in turn may result in diminished benefits and blessings and in extreme instances even disaffection. Understanding the proper relationship between the gospel and the church will prevent confusion, misplaced priorities, and failed expectations, and will lead to the realization of gospel goals through happy, fulfilling participation in the church. Such understanding will avoid possible disaffection and will result in great personal blessings. As, As I, I attempt, attempt to describe, to describe and, comment and comment upon some on distinguishing characteristics the essential relationship between the, the gospel, gospel and, the, and church. the church, noting at the same time their essential relationships, it, it is my prayer, prayer that, a that a perspective may be developed, developed which will enhance the influence, the influence of, of both, both the gospel and the church in our individual, in our individual lives. lives. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a divine and perfect plan. It is composed of eternal, unchanging principles and laws which are universally applicable to every individual regardless of time, place, or circumstance. The principles and laws of the gospel never change. Gospel principles never change. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a divine institution as the kingdom of God on earth administered by the priesthood of God. The Church has authority to teach correctly the principles and doctrines of the gospel and to administer its essential ordinances. The gospel is the substance of the divine plan for personal, individual salvation and exaltation. The Church is the delivery system that provides the means and resources to implement this plan in each individual's life. Procedures, Procedures programs, programs, and policies, policies are developed are within the Church within the to church help us to help realize gospel blessings, gospel blessings according to according our, to our individual, individual capacity and, and circumstances. circumstances. Under divine direction, these policies, policies programs, and procedures, procedures may be changed do change from time to time as necessary, as necessary to fulfill gospel, gospel purposes. Underlying every, every aspect, aspect of church administration, of church administration and, activity and activity are the revealed are eternal the revealed principles eternal as contained in the scriptures. In the scriptures. As individually and collectively, we increase, we increase our, our knowledge, acceptance, and, acceptance and, application and application of gospel, of gospel principles, principles. We, we, we become less dependent on church programs. We can more effectively utilize the church to make our, our lives, lives increasingly gospel-centered. Gospel Sometimes traditions, customs, social practices, and even personal preferences of individual church members may through repeated or common usage, be misconstrued as church procedures or policies. Occasionally, such traditions, customs, and practices 
may be even regarded by some as eternal gospel principles. Under such circumstances, those who do not conform to these cultural standards may mistakenly be regarded as unorthodox or even unworthy. In fact, the eternal principles of the gospel and the divinely inspired Church do accommodate a broad spectrum of individual uniqueness and cultural diversity. The eternal principles of the gospel implemented through the divinely inspired Church apply to a wide variety of individuals in diverse cultures. Therefore, as we live the gospel and participate in the Church, the, the conformity, conformity we, we require, require of ourselves and others should, should be according, according to God's, God's standards. standards. The orthodoxy, orthodoxy upon, upon which we insist, we insist must be founded in fundamental principles and eternal law, eternal law, including free agency and the divine uniqueness of the individual. And direction given by those authorized in the Church. It is important, therefore, to know the difference between eternal gospel principles, which are unchanging, universally applicable, and cultural norms, which may vary with time and circumstance. The source of this perspective is found in the scriptures and may appear to be presented in a rather unorganized and even untidy format. A necessary perspective is gained by studying and pondering the scriptures. The Lord could have presented the gospel to us in a manual, systematically organized by subject, perhaps using examples and illustrations. However, the eternal principles and divine laws of God are revealed to us through accounts of individual lives in a variety of circumstances and conditions. Reading the scriptures, we learn the gospel as it is taught by various messengers at different prophets in a variety of circumstances, and times, and places. We see, we see the, the consequences, consequences as the gospel as it is accepted, accepted or, rejected or rejected by individuals and as, as its, its principles are applied, are applied or, not, or not by varying degrees and by many different people. In the, In the scriptures, scriptures we, discover we discover that varying institutional, institutional forms, forms, procedures, regulations, regulations and ceremonies, and ceremonies are, are utilized, utilized. All, all divinely designed, designed to implement, implement eternal, principles. eternal principles. The practices and procedures change. change. The, principles the principles do not. Do not. <laughs> Through scripture study we may learn eternal principles and how to distinguish them from and relate them to institutional resources. As we, As we liken, liken the, scriptures the scriptures unto ourselves, we can, we can better, better utilize, utilize the institutional resources of the modern restored, restored church, church to, live, to learn, learn, live, and share, and share the, gospel the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ. A favorite, a favorite scriptural, scriptural source, source for me is the Old Testament, the Old book, Testament of book of Leviticus. Leviticus. It is basically, it is basically a, handbook a handbook for Hebrew, Hebrew priests and, and contains, contains many rules, rules regulations, regulations, rituals, rituals and, and ceremonies, ceremonies which, which may seem strange, strange and inapplicable to us. us. It also, it also contains, contains eternal, eternal principles, principles of, the gospel, of the gospel, which are familiar, which are familiar and very, and much, very applicable much applicable to everyone. To everyone. It is interesting and enlightening to read the 19th, to read the 19th chapter, chapter of Leviticus, of Leviticus noting, noting the principles and the practices and, practices and rules. In the, In the first, first two verses, verses we read, And, and the Lord spake, spake unto, unto Moses, Moses, saying, Speak, speak unto, unto the, congregation the congregation of the children of Israel. Of Israel. Here, Here is, is the principle, principle of revelation. revelation. God, God speaks to his children through, through prophets. prophets. He does, he does so today. today. Continuing, the Lord, the Lord says to Moses, Say unto them, unto them Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord, I your, God, the Lord your God, am holy. Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, said, said Be ye be therefore, therefore perfect, perfect even, even as your Father in heaven is, is perfect. perfect. Here is, is an eternal, eternal principle, principle of the gospel.
there follow other eternal principles. Eternal principles. Some, Some from, from the Ten Commandments, commandments. Also, included also included are rules and programs, and programs intended to implement these principles, these principles among the ancient among Hebrews, the ancient Hebrews in, their in their particular circumstances. circumstances. For, For example, example, the divinely directed responsibility to care for the poor is taught. A program is presented namely providing, providing food for the for poor, the poor by, leaving the by leaving the gleanings of the crop and not reaping the corners of the fields. Current, current programs to care for the poor are much different. Are much different. The divine law is, is the same. same. Yet, Yet another principle underlies both, both programs, programs, ancient and, and modern. modern, that is, those, those being, being assisted are given are opportunity, opportunity to, participate to participate in helping themselves, themselves to the, to the extent, extent of their, their capacity. capacity. In, verse In verse 13, 13 the, principle the principle of honesty is taught, is taught accompanied by a rule requiring employers, employers to pay employees, employees for, their work for their work at the end, end of each day. day. Generally, today, that, today, that rule, rule is not necessary. necessary. The, the eternal principle of honesty is implemented by other, by other rules, rules and practices. And practices. Verse, verse 27 contains, contains a rule about personal, personal grooming. grooming. It, it is, is clearly, clearly not applicable, not applicable to, us. to us. However, we also have standards of dress and grooming. grooming. Neither, Neither is an eternal, eternal principle. principle. Both, Both are intended, intended to help, to us, help implement us implement and share, and share gospel, gospel principles. principles. The, the principle of forgiveness, of forgiveness is also is set forth in the same chapter of Leviticus, Leviticus verse, 18, verse 18, concluding with the second great, great commandment, commandment, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as, as thyself, thyself. With, with the added, added divine imprimatur, I am the Lord. Am the Lord. Every, Every church, church member has not has only the opportunity, opportunity right, and privilege to receive a personal receive witness, a personal witness regarding, gospel regarding gospel principles and, principles and, church, and practices, church practices, but the need and obligation to obtain such assurance by exercising his free agency, thereby fulfilling one purpose of his mortal probation. Without such assurance, one may feel confused and perhaps even burdened by what may appear to be simply institutional requirements of the Church. Indeed, it is not enough to obey the commandments and counsel of Church leaders in response to also through study, prayer, and by the influence of the Holy Spirit, we may seek and obtain an individual personal witness that the, the principle, principle or counsel is correct, is correct and, and divinely, divinely inspired. inspired. Then we can give enlightened, enlightened enthusiastic, enthusiastic obedience, obedience, utilizing the church through which to give allegiance, time, talent, talent and, other and other resources without, without reluctance or resentment. Happy, fulfilling, fulfilling participation, participation in the church, church results when we relate when we institutional relate goals, goals, programs, and policies, and policies to gospel principles and to personal eternal goals. goals. When we understand the difference when we see the harmony between, between the, the gospel and, and the, church, the church and the appropriate function of each in our daily lives, lives we, are we are much more likely to do the right things for the right, things things for the right, right reasons. reasons. Institutional discipline is replaced by self-discipline. Supervision is replaced by we will exercise self-discipline and righteous, righteous initiative, initiative guided by church leaders and by a sense, sense of, of divine, divine accountability. accountability. The, the church, church aids us in our, in our effort to use our free agency our creatively, free agency creatively not to invent our own invent values our and own principles, values but to and discover and adopt interpretations, but to learn and live the, the eternal, eternal truths of the gospel. Gospel, gospel living is a process, is a process of continuous individual renewal and improvement until, until the, person the person is prepared, is prepared and qualified, qualified to enter comfortably and with confidence into the presence of God. My brothers and sisters, by inclination, training, and experience, most of my life I have sought understanding by the accumulation of facts and the application of reason. I continue to do so. However, that which I know most surely and which has most significantly and positively affected my life, I do not know by facts and reason alone, but rather by the comforting, confirming witness 
of the Holy Spirit. By that same Spirit, I testify that God is our Father, that Jesus of Nazareth is the only only begotten begotten of the Father Father in the flesh, flesh, and that he is is the Savior and Redeemer of all mankind mankind and each of us. Through his his atoning sacrifice, sacrifice, redemption, and exaltation exaltation are offered as a free gift gift to all who will accept by faith, repentance, and and sacred ordinances. May each, each of us continue, continue to, to learn, learn and apply the eternal, the eternal principles of the gospel, of the gospel utilizing, utilizing fully, fully and appropriately the resources of the divine of the restored divine church. In the words of the Book of Mormon Nephite leader Pahoran, Pahoran, may we rejoice in the great privilege of our, of our church and in the cause of our Redeemer, of our Redeemer and our God. In the name of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. Christ, amen.